Good morning, I'm Gary Elston. I'm pastor at the Lagoda United Methodist Church. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. I want to welcome you to our Easter Sunday celebration. <laughs> If you're like me, this is the first time in a long time that we haven't been in church on Easter, or that I haven't been in church on Easter. And I know it kind of looks like I am because I'm in the church building, but I'm actually recording this on Friday so we can get it ready for you on Sunday. So I'm not in church on Easter Sunday either, and that's just a little weird. I'm staying at home just like we're supposed to be doing. We're still in the executive order to stay home. Hope you're working on your cabin fever, making sure you don't get too big a case. If you're out, and some have to go out, Please practice physical distancing, stay six feet apart, wear a mask for another week or so. If you're staying at home, and I encourage you to do that, make sure others don't feel socially isolated. Give them a call, contact them, tell them that you care. I hope you're reading and listening to the things that we're sending out from our office. If you are not on our list, please email us at lagodiumc at gmail.com. That's L-O-O-G-O-O. T-E-E-U-M-C at gmail.com. If you need to contact us by phone, it's area code 812-295-3049. Now remember, we're not in the office as much. It will take a while to get back with you on the phone. I hope you're enjoying the daily devotionals we're sending out, and please, I hope you enjoy them. Please watch them. Continue to send in your prayer requests. We will compile those and then we'll get them out in the Monday newsletter. They'll be published then. So please look for them in our every Monday newsletter. I hope you're continuing to pray. Pray for yourself. Pray for your family. Pray for your friends. Pray for our community and our state and our nation and our world. Because right now we need prayer. I want to remind you that our building is closed. Everything is canceled because of the stay-at-home order. The only exception to that is our food pantry. Our food pantry will again be open this Thursday. And we could use some more help. Because of the stay at home and because of the way we have to do it now with the virus, it's causing us more work. So if you could help out for a little bit this week, it doesn't have to be Thursday. If you can help us get bags ready on Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, we'd really encourage you to do that. Call the office and let us know, or call Martha Green and let her know. To remind you of our offering, and yeah, we, we are still collecting offering, and I know, I know it's difficult. Every pastor knows it's difficult for the congregation right now to talk about and think about an offering. We still support ministries, and that's why we need the offering. We, we really want to support our ministries. If, you, if it would be easier for you, we can make it in an automatic withdrawal, contact the office. Or if you go to our website, there's a tab called Give Plus, and you can just give right online. Now, because you give... We still have our food pantry, and our food pantry feeds about 130 to 140 families a month. That's about 400 to 450 people a month. And this, way, this past week, Candleburg Meat Processing knew we were still open, and they made a donation of sausage to our food pantry for this week, and it really helped us out. But we can do this, we can have our food pantry because you give, and because you give, others are giving. So I thank you for your gifts. Would you join me in prayer, please? Lord, this Easter morning, we come to you as we always come to you in prayer. In spite of the COVID-19 virus, we still have many blessings to thank you for this morning. So we now lift them to you. And we start first with those who are on the front lines. Those who are doing the work during the pandemic. All the police officers and fire and the EMTs and the ambulance, the hospital workers, the grocery store clerks, the truck driver, all, all those folks on the front lines. So we pray for them, and, and we all have other joys that we lift up to you, God, so here they are. Father, there's a lot of concerns going on, you know, because of the pandemic. Well, again, we lift up those people on the front lines, and we lift up all of those folks who have the disease, who are going to have the disease, who know somebody, who's a family member of, please be with them. Father, there are other concerns that we also lift up today, and we'll do those silently now. Father, in the joy and hope of Easter morning, in the, in the midst of our singing and shouting, we know there are those who are very bewildered and sad. We pray for those that have no hope, for those who suffer from depression or loneliness or fear. 
We pray for those affected by this virus, those who have it, those who've died from it, those who are going to get it, those who will die from it, and the families and friends of all of those involved. We pray for those places and people in our world where death and domination rule, where those in power ignore the poor, where war never ends, where children are hungry, where parents grieve because they can't provide. We pray for those held hostage to addiction and chronic illness that debilitates. Father, in the joy and hope of this Easter morning, we realize the depth and breadth of what it means to be your Easter people. For we're the ones who are called to go into the places in our lives to work for justice and for all of your creation. It's up to us to bear witness to the promise of the resurrection that we celebrate today, to hold those in despair and believe for them that love is stronger than death. Father, in the joy and hope of this Easter morning, give us the courage to bear your living love in every corner of our lives so that your peaceable realm will be so here on earth as it is in heaven. And now in communion with the saints of your church, we pray the prayer that your son taught his disciples by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now we'll go to some music. Thank you. 
Thank you for the music. We appreciate it. Now let's turn to our scripture. Early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. She ran and found Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved. She said, they have taken the Lord's body out of the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. Peter and the other disciple started out for the tomb. They were both running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He stooped and looked in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he didn't go in. Then Simon Peter arrived and went inside. He also noticed the linen wrappings lying there, while the cloth that had covered Jesus' head was folded up and lying apart from the other wrappings. Then the disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For until then they still hadn't understood the scriptures that said Jesus must rise from the dead. Then they went home. Oh wait, it says scripture number two. Yeah, there's two scriptures today. This one comes from John 11, 25 to 27. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Everyone who lives in me and believes in me never will die. Do you believe this, Martha? Yes, Lord, she told him. I have always believed you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one who has come into the world from God. Would you join me in prayer, please? Father, let these be your thoughts that pass through my lips, into our hearts and out through our hands and feet. We pray this in Christ's holy name. Amen. Yeah, two scriptures. I know that's not normal. This is not a normal Easter. Normally you would be here. You're at home watching. But I think these scriptures are very related. And the first scripture was the normal scripture that you expected to hear today. Jesus being risen from the dead. But that second scripture about Lazarus, that one threw you for a wrench, didn't it? Threw you for a loop. So we'll get to it, I promise. But it's really, this is really a continuation. It's the culmination of our series on I Am. Remember, we've been talking about Jesus saying, I am, and then following with several examples of what he is. So the first one he said was, I am the bread of life. And he said this to folks after they had had their fill, when Jesus fed 5,000 with five loaves and two fish. They came looking for him again, looking for more bread. And he told them, I am the bread of life. Then he said, I am the light of the world. And if we follow the light of the world, we'll be led to the light of God. Then he said, I am the gate for the sheep. And that's that hole in the wall for the sheepfold, for the sheep to come in. Jesus is the gate for the sheep, the one who lets them in to the sheepfold, the one who lets us into heaven. Then he said, I am the good shepherd. We talked about Psalm 23 and how good shepherds do a lot of things, and Jesus does all that, and then Jesus said he was going to die for his sheep. Then he said, I am the vine, and we need to be connected to the vine as branches. We need to be connected to the vine so that we can bear fruit. Then last week we saw where Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the way. So today we start with the story of Lazarus. It's, it's chronologically before the story of Jesus' resurrection. So let's hear the story. Jesus is down near Bethany, or down near Jericho, where John the Baptist has been baptizing folks. So he's a ways from Jerusalem. And he gets word that one of his best friends, Lazarus, is dying. Now the the apostles assumed that Jesus would want to go quickly to Jerusalem to maybe get there before Lazarus dies, but Jesus dawdles for about two days. And then they take another two days to get to Jerusalem. Now, before they left to go to Jerusalem, some of the apostles didn't want to go. Jesus had already told them that, you know, I'm going to die in Jerusalem. And the Apostle Thomas, among others, argued and said, no, it's not. And finally, Jesus can be very convincing. And he said, we're going. And Thomas says, well, then, okay, I'm just going to go die with you. So they come to Bethany, which is about a mile from Jerusalem. It's where the home of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus are. Mary and Martha and Lazarus are brother and sister. Lazarus is the one who is sick. So they approach the home, and before Jesus even gets into the home, Mary catches him. and says, oh, oh, Jesus, if you had been here, he's already dead. And Jesus talks to her and says, 
I am the resurrection and the life. And he goes on and he explains what he's saying by saying this next. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never ever die. So he quits talking with Martha and he goes into the house and he, there's Mary, Lazarus' other sister. And Mary says, oh, if you had only been here, Jesus. And Jesus understands. But Jesus says, let's go to the tomb. And they get to the tomb and while they're at the tomb, Jesus weeps. Remember, that's the shortest verse in the Bible. And it happens to be at Lazarus' tomb where Jesus weeps. Lazarus, his good friend, is dead. And Jesus weeps. So he looks at Mary and says, Mary, let's roll the stone away. And Mary says, wait, he's been dead for four days, Lord. There's, the stench will be terrible. Jesus says, let's do it anyway. So they roll the stone away. And Jesus says, Lazarus, come out. And he does. He kind of looks like that. He's still got the bandages wrapped around him. And everybody is kind of taken back and in awe of what's just happened. And Jesus has to coax him a little bit and say, let's go take the bandages off of him. And then they had a great reunion. Oh my goodness, they had a great reunion. Lazarus, who was dead, is now alive. That doesn't happen very often. And the party continued. Well, that's the end of the first story. And the second story, the one about Jesus' resurrection, we're going to get to in a minute, but I need to tell you how they're connected, or at least begin that process of telling you how they're connected. When the story of Lazarus raising from the dead happens, it's about two weeks, give or take, before the resurrection story of Jesus. So people in the area are probably still buzzing about Lazarus being resurrected when Jesus is killed. Remember, that's the Passover that Jesus dies. So it's only two weeks between these stories. Now, I know we read from John 11, where Lazarus had died, and in John 19, Jesus dies. Eight chapters, that's a lot of the book of John. It's really only about two weeks. So let's get to the second story, the one that you came tuned in to hear today. Mary Magdalene. Jesus is dead. She knows that. She saw him die on Friday. She saw him get buried on Friday. She prepared aloes and spices to anoint his body, and it was too late to do it before the Sabbath started on Friday night. So she had to wait all through Saturday. Very early in the morning, on Sunday, she gets up, and she goes to the tomb to anoint Jesus' body. And as she approaches the tomb, she notices that the stone has already been rolled away. And it takes her aback because she was not expecting that. So she ran back and she talked to Peter and to John. And they run with her back to the grave. Peter outruns John. I'm sorry. John outruns Peter and gets there first. And he stoops and looks in, but he doesn't go in. Now Peter, being Peter, he ran right in. And he looked around, and as soon as Peter got in there, John went in there with him. And they looked around, and they saw the clothes, and saw the head, head part fail, folded up, and they knew, or at least John knew. Peter wasn't quite convinced. And then they left. And they left Mary, because Mary did not go. Mary was not going to leave. She wasn't going to leave that open tomb. So she walks up, and she sees... She looks in and she sees angel. Peter and John didn't see an angel. This angel is for Mary. And the angel says, why are you crying? And she turns around to leave. And there's the gardener. And the gardener says, woman, why are you crying? And Mary, now listen, Mary says, oh, they've taken Jesus' body. If you've taken it somewhere, let me know and I'll go get it. She thinks he's the gardener. But it only takes one word from this gardener for Mary to know who it is. Jesus says Mary. And Mary knows right away that it's Jesus. And the reunion starts right there. Jesus is alive. No one would have believed that. But Mary saw it. 
Mary was the first one to see Jesus alive. And she is excited and they have a conversation. And then she goes back to tell all of the apostles. Mary, Jesus is alive. So, so now you've heard, heard two stories. A lot of similarities in them. Both of them, there was somebody that died. Lazarus and Jesus. Both of them were really dead. Jesus was dead three days. Lazarus was dead four days. There were a lot of mourners at both of them. They meant a lot to a lot of people. And the last similarity is they were both resurrected. But that's where the similarities end. Because the resurrections were quite different. You see, in, in Lazarus' case, the resurrection, he was humanly resurrected. I mean, when he came out of that tomb, his body was humanly resurrected. He was fully human again. That meant that Lazarus was, unfortunately, going to have to go through death one more time. Now, there are a few people in Scripture who never face death. And there are a few people in Scripture who face death twice. And Lazarus is one of them. Because he was resurrected humanly. Jesus, on the other hand, is somewhat different. It's radically different. Because Jesus isn't resurrected humanly. He's resurrected to his ethereal body, his spiritual body. So he doesn't have to die again. And his whole meaning of, I am the resurrection, is for us saying that we won't have to die just like he didn't have to die. When he died, he kept living. So will we. We just get to change bodies. Now there's a caveat to that. And the caveat happens back in the story of Lazarus' death and resurrection. Remember when Jesus ran into Martha and Jesus said, I am the resurrection, and explained about the resurrection, that nobody's going to have to die. He then asked Martha something really important. He says, do you believe, do you believe this, Martha? And Martha, that Martha's answer is yes. See, that's the caveat. That word right up there, that yes, that's the caveat. We have to believe. Jesus came. So that we can live. But we have to believe. And, and when we do, like, like we do now, we can celebrate Easter and Jesus' resurrection knowing, knowing that when we die, we'll be resurrected. That's why we celebrate today. And you can celebrate with your chocolate bunnies and your little marshmallow peeps and all those things to help you with the celebration. But we're celebrating that Jesus is alive. And because of that, we will be too after we die. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for these stories. Both of them. We thank you for Christ coming to earth to die for us so that when we die, yet we will live. We celebrate that today and even though we're celebrating a part in our own homes with just a couple of people there, we're celebrating together with billions of Christians around the world. We celebrate today's resurrection. We celebrate Jesus' resurrection. And we thank you so much. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to move into Holy Communion now. And as you can see, I'm going to be reading the part that's in the white. And then you yourselves can read the part that's in the yellow. And I hope you've got your elements ready. I talked to you about it all week, about having your elements ready, your juice and your bread. Mine are sitting here in front of me, so we're going to go ahead and begin. If you need to, push pause, get your elements ready, and come back. The Lord be with you, and you say also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity. 
made covenant to be our sovereign God, brought before us a land flowing with milk and honey, and set before us the way of life. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. By your great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your Son from the dead, and to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Once we were no people, but we are now your people. Declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ, who called us out of the darkness into his marvelous light. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and the Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his apostles and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So now, if you will please partake of your bread. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So now if you would please partake of your cup. On the day you raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread. And in the power of your Holy Spirit, your church has continued the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Now it's time for some music.
This concludes our worship for Easter, and it was an unusual Easter celebration. But regardless of the building being closed and regardless of the pandemic, Easter still happened, and we still celebrated. I want to thank those who helped, those who helped me film, those who helped me with the music. We appreciate all that you do. Continue to look for our devotionals every day. Now, please be safe and continue to share God's love however you can. Amen.